Our guest this week on This Is America is Ambassador Mohammed al Husani al-Sharif. He's the ambassador of the League of Arab States to the United States and former ambassador of Saudi Arabia to Canada, as well as former ambassador of Saudi Arabia to Turkey. Mr. Ambassador, thank you very much for joining us. Let's talk a little bit about the League itself. Give a little history, give a little bit of sense of who belongs to the League and its mission, huh? Um, as you know, it's, uh, it's a regional uh, national organization. Uh, of course, it's intergovernmental. It's composed of uh, 22 Arab countries. Uh, at the beginning, it started with five or seven, and then it expanded, uh, and, up, and now it's uh, 22 Arab countries, um, including, of course, Palestine. And, um, it, and it's one of the oldest organizations, actually, organi in, the, in, the, in, in the area and uh, in the world at large. Uh, it was established before the United Nations, even. It was in uh, March 22, 1945. Mm. And a few months later, I think, the United Nations uh, was established. So it's really an old organization. It, uh, of course, the objective at the beginning was to coordinate the policies of the Arab countries to help other Arab countries which were under uh, colonization uh, to also to get their independence. Uh, um, the major issue which came later after all the Arab countries have uh, um, won their independence was the Palestinian issue, is to help uh, liberate Palestine also, and uh, that's why it's up to now. Palestinian issue comes at the top of the agenda of the Arab League. Of course, there are other issues which are very important to the Arab League, like, for example, uh, there are so many agencies affiliated with the Arab League uh, in, on environment, on education, on health, on uh, security, on combating terrorism, um, and on, on sport. Uh, so it, uh, and those have been very successful to a certain extent. Even in defense, there is also some uh, cooperation, although it's limited. On the political, it's much less really um, um, uh, active than other uh, other agencies which are affiliated with the League for, uh, for, and, uh, for some reasons which are understandable. Mm. Let me ask you this question. When you look at the Arab world, what do you see? I see, uh, and, I mean, I see the most, it's, it's the most, one of the most important region in the world. Mm. Um, I mean, even population-wise, if you take the Arab League, it's composed of more than 250 million. And this number is not uh, easy. I mean, it's uh, and then it's an area where um, all religions, holy religions, emerge from there. This is also very important: Islam, Judaism, and Christianity. Mm -hmm. It is in the from the Arab in the middle of the Arab world, or from the Middle East, you can say. And then you have also this is it's it, it's uh, it, um, it controls two thirds, maybe or more of the of the world oil mm -hmm. uh, reservation uh, re reserves and also the in gas also it's also the uh, it has the greatest reserves you name it so it's a very very uh, and then you have history civilization in that area that goes to seven thousand ten thousand years mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so this is really and this strategic position in the midst of the world right. between F africa asia and europe and all of this makes that region the arab world of course, and I mean the Arab world is in the Middle East. It makes it really unique and very important, uh, especially to to many countries in the world. An American or a Westerner who looks at the Arab world is seeing uh, just uh, chaos and uh, trouble and uh, extremists. Uh, how, how, how do you how do you put that together? Because you see it one way, and we may see it another way. Uh, well, uh, maybe it's our destiny to have so many problems and also the policies of others. But uh, we are not unique in that. I mean, the extremism is everywhere. I mean, before 9-11, you have extremists in many countries. Here in the United States, in Europe, in Asia, you have... Uh, so, it's really it's not unique. But uh, it's also that area because of the importance of that area to the world. Mm. Religiously, economically, strategically, this really makes that area. It's always boiling. It's not. It's not a stable place, 
but these are not really the the main reasons but it's uh, it's there and you know we are we are also uh, we have leaders in that area who are authoritarian mm -hmm. this also affected the whole the whole um, um, uh, area and the arab world in particular because of the of course you have leaders who have stayed there for 40 years mm -hmm. 30 years and elections there were some elections but it's all cosmetic it's not real elections really Arab League has stepped up to the plate uh, very forcefully in uh, Libya and in Syria. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, in the past, sometimes, uh, at least viewed from the outside, people would look at the Arab League and say uh, it was not as effective as it could be. But boy, it has taken some very serious stances with those two countries, huh? Oh, yes, you are, you are right. This is to the surprise of many. Mm and uh, to the admiration of many also mm -hmm. uh, it took really very decisive decisions it's uh, moved in every direction uh, this is i think is due to the magnitude of the violence and killings and uh, that really took place in those two countries the arab league of course it's, it cannot decide the secretary general cannot decide those who have the decisions are the members Mm -hmm. So the Arab League as a, as a regional organization is influenced by the ideas and, of course, the decisions of the 22 members. But this doesn't mean that you have members who are more influential than others within any organization, although they are all equal. And by the way, the Arab League charter uh, stipulates on the, or it's, it, uh, it, it mentions in the charter that it uh, maintains the sovereignty and independence, independence of the 22 members. Of each of the countries. Of, yes. Therefore, now, when, when the Arab League took some decisions like vis-a-vis -vis Syria mm -hmm. and Libya at the beginning and then Syria now, uh, it was really many people looked at it as an intervention in the affairs, in the domestic affairs, of those two countries, uh -huh. uh, but the Arab, the, the League, I think, because of the magnitude of killing and violence and atrocities committed by the regimes, whether in in Libya or in Syria, uh, I think uh, nobody can question the decisions of the League. Uh, that's why the Arab League. I mean, I can tell you the decision they took. I mean, it's uh, it's a list of decisions that uh, one after another including uh, sending observers, including uh, asking Arab countries to withdraw ambassadors, mm. Arab ambassadors from Damascus, mm -hmm. although this is a sovereign uh, issue. I mean, having an ambassador there or not, it's not really the business of the Arab League. But they did recommend that Arab countries withdraw their ambassadors. Um, they fro they uh, froze uh, all the, um, the, fa the, the, the assets of uh, Syria. They stopped also Build, uh, constructing projects in Syria, they uh, not only that they went further than that by uh, by uh, by ac uh, by accepting or by recommending the intervention of NATO even mm -hmm. intervention of NATO in a fellow Arab country. This was a very serious, but they took that decision and they suspended from the league. Suspended from the meetings of the league and all the Syria. agencies, Syria uh, and Libya and Libya. Libya also was suspended from the membership of the league. And this is, I think, maybe for the first time, I think, in the history of only Egypt, I think, at one, at, at one mm -hmm. point. But uh, and also Syria was suspended in the meetings of the League and any affiliate in any affiliated agencies or committees with the League. Which, and not only that, even with Syria, they uh, asked, the League asked, uh, requested that all those who committed violence and crime should be brought to justice. Okay, hold on that note, Mr. Ambassador. We're going to take a little break. Uh, if uh, folks are just joining us, we're talking with the ambassador who represents the League of Arab States here in the United States. Sit tight. This is America and the world. This is America is made possible by the National Education Association, the nation's largest advocate for children and public education. Poonsan Corporation, 
forging a higher global standard. The CTC Foundation, AFO Communications, and the Rotondaro Family Trust. Mr. Ambassador, uh, in Syria, uh, 30,000 dead, uh, a million displaced, 300,000 refugees. Who's winning at what cost? I think nobody is winning. No, none. I cannot say. Actually, everyone is suffering. And I, I don't think anyone can claim that he's winning in this war. In this war this crisis of Syria. So it's a, it's a very complicated issue. It's unique compared to what happened in the other four countries, what you call the Arab Spring. Mm -hmm. This is a unique situation. Uh, Why is it unique? Well, it actually, in all, in all the five countries, each one is unique. You cannot, I mean, say that they are similar. Maybe they share uh, the grievances. They can share, they share, all of them share that. And what are the grievances? The grievances, I mean, like for, uh, like uh, lack of transparency, lack of democracy. Although there are elections, but it's not. Poverty. It's cosmetic poverty. poverty. And then no the jobs, corruption. No jobs. Corruption. corruption. Uh, all of, the, of these, of course, are, uh, they share that. Using social media to come, to rise, mm -hmm. and to revolt is also, they, can, they share that. I mean, social media, really, it's, uh, it played a very effective role in, the, in this uh, in these revolutions in one, another, in one country and another, of course, is different. And the magnitude, again, of how much they used or how much the people used social media. I mean, Egypt, in Egypt, they can mobilize one million in one day mm. through social media. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is real. So the social media played a role. But the grievances, they share the grievances, of course. They, say, they, they share also the, the, long, the longevity of so much time of atrocities and dictatorship and authoritarian regimes. Uh, that's why, I mean, the Arab... If you repress people, that's not going to last forever, is it? Yeah. People are going to rise up, especially yeah. with today's technology. Although, although the Arab nations and those countries and some of those countries, they are really were very patient. I mean, many people ask, why the now? Why they shouldn't have started earlier? But, you know, it's also um, repression and then dictatorship and then, the, of course, using all these... Uh, um, uh, 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 I mean, it's injustice against people, detaining people, imprisoning people who raise their voice. All of these, of course, but uh, the Arab people have proved to be patient. At the same time, they cannot wait for long. Will uh, Assad go? Uh, as far as I, uh, I assume, I mean, it's, uh, it's a matter of time. Mm -hmm. I don't think, uh, I mean, in history, I don't think one who did all of that can stay. But the matter of time, when? Father and son. Yeah, I mean, how can, uh, I don't know how can he stay. I don't, I cannot imagine even how can he accept what's going on within his own country. He should, now the time is against him. Now, let me ask you this question, Mr. Ambassador. If he is uh, toppled, if he is assassinated, if he chooses to go, will there be the same chaos in uh, Syria as there has turned out to be in Libya? If you ask me, I mean, uh, about any other country, I will, I can answer. But on Syria, it's a very difficult to predict, very difficult, really, because Syria is, uh, I mean, now the uh, Syria is unique. I mean, now it's unique, very unique, that everything is fragmented, is divided. Yeah. You name it, the opposition is divided. The army may be, to a certain extent, intact. That's what kept the regime, but the, ar the army is sectarian. So those who defected But are somebody pure. told me once, who, who is knowledgeable about Syria, that even if Assad went, that there are factions within the ruling uh, 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 party or within the ruling body uh, so that uh, it might continue on and on and on. It's not as simple as one person. Uh, this is an assumption. I mean, it can be true. It can, it can be not. I mean, it's, uh, we cannot, uh, I cannot prove that. I, I don't know. Mm. Maybe this, this one who told you he knows uh, more than me about Syria. But the way I see things, everything is divided. How about behind the scenes? We've got uh, the United States uh, humanitarian aid. Uh, mm. Saudi Arabia is involved. Qatar is involved. Yeah. Uh, but on the other side, Russia and China seem to hold their position and will not vote uh, to... Uh, uh, this is, yeah, this is... And a, then Iran is now involved yeah. in supplying 
weaponry? Yeah, Iran, Iran uh, of course, we understand and we know that the relationship between Syria and Iran, but now you come to Russia and China. I mean, those two countries, three times they vetoed resolution, which really, for the, to, which are, uh, uh, their, obje their objective and their purpose is to protect the, the Syrian people mm. and to have the problem sub subsequently solved or resolved peacefully, and yet they do got the, the these vetoes, which of course, this will lead me to the po next point, that how in the world can one or two countries decide the destiny of one of the suffering of one population, like Syria, just because of this veto that we cannot move anywhere? What's, what, 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 what's, what's their goal? What's Russia's goal? What's China's goal? What, what? I uh, really, I, but I assume that maybe they think that there were times where the United States took decisions on their own without their consultation, without even the Security Council. So they thought that they will not allow this again. Uh, besides, there is strategically, it's important Syria, although on, on, when it comes to trade or commerce, there's nothing between uh, Russia and Syria. But uh, strategically, there is, an, uh, of course, a Russian base there. And uh, th uh, strategically, it's very important. To Iran also, you know, it's very important Syria. Uh, strategically important. China, I don't understand unless there is an influence of or cooperation or coordination between China and Russia. Let me talk about Libya for a minute. Um, we helped liberate that country, the United States, and then a uh, terrorist uh, attack and mm. kill our ambassador mm. and also uh, some of the people who were stationed there. And I'm sure, although it's never been clearly reported to me, that uh, Libyans died in that uh, situation as well. Do we know how many Libyans died? No, I don't think we know. It's, uh, but you are right. I mean, the United States played a very positive role uh, in Syria, in Libya, no doubt about it. But I if mean. this happens there, Mr. Ambassador, uh, that we help liberate a country and then we are attacked by terrorists, uh, you could understand the reticence of the United States to get involved in Syria uh, because we don't know who the players are and we might uh, get involved and then all of a sudden uh, we're attacked again. Terrorists uh, all over the world uh, hate the United States. Um. Not the United States, the policies, maybe, certain policies of the United States. You cannot say they have They're the like United us. They're yeah, like I mean, us as people. I mean, yeah, ex exactly. But, uh, you know, the, some, but you, when, I mean, I'm, I'm sure there are many Libyans. We, I don't have a survey, but many Libyans who appreciate the role of the United States. Oh, and, yes, they came out. Oh, uh, yeah, they really, they appreciate. Do you think that's a possibility in many countries where the people, the 95% the of people in some of these countries who uh, look up to the United States, uh, appreciate the United States, uh, that they will uh, demonstrate uh, 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 and, and, and try to get these extremists sidelined. I'm sure. I mean, the, I, I, I watched closely the role of the United States since I came here, and uh, especially when the, and before even I came here with vis-a-vis uh, -vis the Arab Spring. It was very positive in many ways, although the United States was at the beginning reluctant. We, we dragged our feet. Reluctant in yes. some areas. And perhaps they would rather have the same regime. And we propped up a lot of those dictators. Uh, you, I mean, you said that. It's OK. I did say that. <laughs> okay. I'm an American. It's almost a free country. Okay. Okay. Yes. We get to say things yeah. like that. OK. okay. But you see what I mean? The, but few, uh, few elements, 20, 30, 40, 1,000 in one country took a position against the United States. It's normal. I mean, it doesn't matter. But you have a whole population behind you, and they appreciate your role. But don't take it that few people, they come and they attack the embassy and so on, and you say, oh, no, I don't like uh, to do anything. Not anymore. You cannot do that. But, Mr. Ambassador, You will not have any relationship with any country if I go to do that, because the, there, are, there are certain elements within every country who don't like the United States, and there are millions who like the United I, States. I know, Mr. Ambassador, but here's my problem. We've got 300, uh, uh, 300 million people in the United States, and I sometimes uh, look down from an airplane and say, it's amazing it works as well as it does. Uh, there are crazy people out there. There are angry people out there. There are deranged people out there. They are going to make films. They are going to draw cartoons. They are going to make speeches. Uh, 
every time one of these things, we can't control them. And if somebody says something, or you get uh, uh, a guy down in, 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 in Texas, I guess it was, who threatens to burn the Koran, and the whole Middle East explodes. Uh, somebody makes a horrible, insulting film of the prophet, and the whole 20 countries riot. Here's the frustration I have, Mr. Ambassador. Crazy people in the United States are gonna say crazy things. Is this gonna happen every single time? I, I, I thought that, uh, you know, the, Arab, the position of the Arab League vis-a-vis -vis what happened recently on this movie, The Innocence of Islam or so of Muslims, it's really, it, it was condemned. By, sure. by the Arab League that attack, uh, as a result attacked of the attacking embassies will of course will hinder their role to play in, in the in within the country also the Arab um, the Arab League of course doesn't accept that Islam or any religion should be tarnished or the way it was done or uh, the, the, the way the defamation that was taking taking place here and somewhere else not only here even in Europe in some European countries. Of course, it's uh, the sensitivity of one billion and a half Muslims to such things. It's really, it's, uh, it's there. You cannot, I mean, ex uh, we know that the United States is free, that a crazy guy can make a movie like this, and, but this is not the government. This, but, who, but, you, but you have to explain, how can you explain this to the man in the street? in the Arab world and the Muslim world. It's, you need, a, you know, it's not everybody understand and analyze things as we do here. Correct, correct. Uh, so it's really, it can, comes instantly uh, because of uh, religion is very sensitive. The, the president of Egypt uh, says, insult to the Islamic prophet Muhammad are part of an organized assault on the uh, Muslim religion and cultural values. Uh, and that cannot be brushed aside. Well, the only thing I disagree there is it's not an organized assault. These are people that are half-baked doing these kinds of things. So it's not an organized assault I think assault maybe what he meant, Islam. yes, what he meant is that, you know, this incident that happened, this movie was when it was happened, on the 11th. Yeah. 11th of September. Yeah. 9-11. Yeah, but that's the guy out in California. Yes, yes, but this was done, I mean, not in one night. What he meant, I think, and I'm not going to defend the president, but I think what he meant that it was planned ahead of the 9-11, the, the, the anniversary of the 9-11, and it, uh, this took maybe two, three, five, six months to prepare this movie. It's, yeah. it's not, and it had been posted. Yeah, it had and, been posted. Yeah, and it was organized, of course, but this is what he meant, but the, it's exploded on the 9th, 11th. Yeah. Of course, that was as if it's a plan. Maybe this is what he meant. But um, as I told you that within the Arab world, the Muslim world, there are crazy people. There are deviant elements, the same as in every country. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. you cannot generalize. And, you, are you, and the whole nation cannot pay the price for the deviant actions of others. But how, how do we work together uh, to say that these things will happen I mean, we have uh, a, a Broadway show coming to Washington called The Book of Mormon. I've seen it. Mm -hmm. It is so irreverent. It is so insulting. Uh, it is uh, incredibly popular, very humorous, and incredibly successful. There was a piece of art a number of years ago mm -hmm. where uh, uh, some, a, a photograph of a crucifix in um, some urine. Uh, and it caused a huge uh, argument here in the United States. Comedians insult God in the United States, gays, uh, people with disabilities, African Americans, and uh, we have a right to be angry about that, and people do get angry, and we should not be insulting other people's religions. But I say it will happen, and in the United States, it's probably more bound to happen here than any place else because of the freedom of speech. Um, that's why, we, I mean, many Arab countries and Muslim countries are thinking of, uh, and even in Europe, having some resolutions or some um, ideas that will really prevent such tarnishing religions, no matter any religion. Yeah, but you can't, you can't. Uh, yeah, but, but, but you cannot Arab free League, them. Yes. Arab League calls for the criminalization of blasphemy. Mm. That's not going to happen. That's yeah. not going to happen. 
we, we can't. Uh, 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 how about every uh, imam in the mosque on Friday prayers or leaders of all of these countries saying to their people, this is going to happen and we cannot just explode when it does happen. Is that, do you think that could ever be a possibility? No, I, do, I don't think so. But, uh, you know, this you is, you brought me in an area that, you know, you, maybe you need some experts or some religious experts on that. But as for me, as a Muslim, as an Arab. Yeah. Uh, it's offensive. Uh, it's, it's offensive. Yeah, it's really, I, it's unacceptable. I mean, but... For information about my new book, The Chance of a Lifetime, and online video for all This Is America programs, visit our website, thisisamerica.net. And now you can follow us on Facebook. This is America is made possible by the National Education Association, the nation's largest advocate for children and public education. Poonsan Corporation, forging a higher global standard. The CTC Foundation, AFO Communications, and the Rotondaro Family Trust.